Well, hello, the sun is shining. We're on another episode of The Garden Girl. Um, we're now into mid-July, well into mid-July now. Um, so today, I'm gonna take you through the tomatoes that we started, the determinate and indeterminate ones that are at my house, how they're doing, what I think about them, um, and what I'm using on them at this moment to get the best crop possible. Um, secondly, we're gonna jump to planting potatoes. So even if you don't wanna plant them this year, we're gonna go ahead and go through how you're gonna plant them so that if you want to next spring, you can. Um, I'm gonna put them in, that's just me. I'm always a little late on the get-go sometimes, but we're gonna go into that. And then finally, we're gonna look at garlic because garlic is a very easy crop to grow. Um, and we're gonna go through how you do it when you harvest it and what you do. So stay tuned, we're gonna be right back. The sound of silence in cars were cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains, and heart like the Fourth of July. You swore and said, We are not, we are not shining stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you lost and alone, or you see. Like a stone, carry on. May your past be the sound of your feet on the ground. Carry on, carry on, carry on. We are, we are shining stars. Carry on, we are invincible. We are who we are. WJ. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. Well, welcome back. It's all about tomatoes right now. So, um, these were the two plants that we planted on, I believe it was the third episode into this season. Um, this one here was the new variety, the Rapunzel, that uh, came out this year that I wanted to give it a try because I think that's part of it, you know, see what works, what doesn't. Um, I like it. It's growing good. Um, I know a lot of you guys are like, well, mine doesn't look like that. Well, maybe I'm just getting lucky. I don't know. Um, I'm having good luck so far with it very disease resistant even with all this rain we've been having i have got to give this one a five star review and it does hold up to its name if you can see right here the rapunzel gets its name from very long strands hence rapunzel so it is living up to it it's doing everything it's supposed to do it is indeterminate so again i've been going in like just like here see how the main stem's coming up and we have a leaf right there. So I'm gonna go in and sucker this sucker. No, I didn't mean to say that on purpose, but good joke, good joke. Um, so what I do is I just kind of keep up with these suckers and that's it. I mean, that's about it for this one. Um, nice little cherry tomato here. And they're, they're good size, they're very uniform. I've already started harvesting a little bit. Uh, it, they do start from the bottom, like most tomatoes. You're gonna see them start ripening from the bottom and do 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 work their way up. Now on the flip side, the little Roma. Okay, I like the Roma. Um, very little compact plant, this particular one, this particular Roma. I do like it and I am going to give it a thumbs up, um, two thumbs up because even though it's determinant, um, 
Next year, I guarantee I'm gonna, I already spoke to Pops, we're gonna do way more of them. But I wanted to try them this year. Um, I ate one, full of meat, great. Um, and I love it, I mean, it's, it's little. So for you guys that want nice little tomatoes for your salads, or, or just a slice, or eat fresh, this particular Roma hybrid, yes. Definitely a two thumbs up, because you can do this right on your, I mean, you can see the size of it. My God, I wouldn't even need a pot that big. Um, and again, I cut off a few of the lower leaves, um, but nothing major. I mean, it's really, and again, since it's determinant, I don't have to touch it. Besides the bottom ones, I don't even have to touch it. Um, I, you can see where I've cut off a few here, but that's it. Now I'm just waiting for more to come on and for more to ripen. I've harvested a few. Um, so yeah, definitely, I would definitely suggest this for you people renting, uh, apartment dwellers, people that just have container gardens. Um, other than that, the other thing I wanted to tell you was I, I still am using my tomato tone. I have put it around the base. I'm doing that approximately still every three weeks. Um, this has been really rough. Thank God for time release, fertilizer and slow release because with all this rain that we've been having, mother of God, I, you can't get in to do liquid fertilizer. I, I mean, I guess there's two ways to look at it. It can either be saturated with rainwater or saturated with fertilizer water. I go with saturated with fertilizer water, but I'm trying to use my time release as much as possible. Um, this is what I switched over to, and I'll tell you why, since everything's fruiting now, this is a 251, which means five is the middle number, five is the fruiting number, that's your phosphorus, that's what I want. Um, this is, as you can see, OMRI, so we are staying organic. Uh, I love it. I'm loving the results on it. Um, very easy to use. Uh, it's just like two ounces in a gallon. Pour it in your, I mean, just water it. It's pretty much like miracle Grow. It's just dump two ounces, shake real well, make sure you shake it. Um, now, remember, this is organic. So the one thing I want to tell you is if you are opposed to maybe a pond smell or a fishy smell, put your clothespin on your nose or something. It is, I mean, and I, I like fishing, don't get me wrong, I do. Um, but with a lot of these new fish emulsions, fish-based, which are excellent, um, you are gonna get a little bit of smell to it. So I just wanna tell you guys that. Um, I don't know of anywhere that sells it around here. You can get it on Amazon, online, um, but this is the first year we're doing it. I love Jess and Ron from Dram for letting me try this. It is, I, I have to give this fertilizer a two thumbs up. It's great and it's keeping me organic. Um, last but not least, again, as I tried to tell you before, and I know we've discussed this on other ones, anytime you're nipping or cutting, try to use, I, I, and I, again, I, these are well worth the money, the Dram clippers. Um, try to keep clean cuts down here on all your suckers and give it a minute. If you're not sure if something's a sucker or not, let it grow out a little bit. Let it grow out a titch, but it's always gonna be at that leaf axle. And this is a perfect size to get them at when they're little. Little is good. But so once you do that, you're gonna wanna keep it tied up, especially with these indeterminate guys. Um, when we do bounce in a few weeks out to me and Pop's garden, um, they're, they're big. They're, <laughs> They're hedging above my head now, most of them anyhow. So the tying is very, very important, especially with the storms that we've been having and the winds. These thunderstorms will really knock the crap out of them. So if you haven't gone out and tied yours up, get out there and do it. We usually check ours twice a week. Uh, again, if you have the small one, like the little Roma behind me, I don't think I've tied him up, but like twice. Yeah, twice. I mean, he's just producing tomatoes. He's not really growing plant-wise. so. Fabulous. So anyhow, those are my two thumbs up for In and About the Tomatoes. Happy with both. Write them down. I hope you try them next year if you didn't try them this year. And when we come back, we're gonna jump up and go from tomatoes to potatoes. So you're gonna learn how to do some potato gardening.
Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. Brilliantly practical scientist Harriet Tuttle's search for a more efficient life concluded with an unorthodox solution. Harriet created four more Harriets. Together they were a model of efficiency. However, while identical, they had their own interests and their own retirement plans, each customized with a Raymond James financial advisor, allowing them to enjoy life separately and together. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. And we're back. So we're over here with the potatoes. Now, um, this is my first year growing them too. And I think it'll be really fun for all of us to try them. Now, should I have had them in earlier? Yes. Actually, you can do a second crop, but your first crop, let me start by saying, it should be in once your soil temp is 45 degrees. Um, so once it's to that, you can plant it, which it's Ohio. Who knows when that will be? So you just got to kind of take a soil temp. Um, the second crop, because most of your potatoes are going to mature within 65 to 100 days, roughly. They're all different, just like flowers, just like tomatoes. So you can put a second crop in June 15th, if you like. Obviously, I'm way behind. So am I going to get really big potatoes? new because it's gonna frost probably too early before i get to them but just mark down that as soon as the soil temp is 45 you can plant them and again your second crop can go in mid-june um so what wh where do you get seed potatoes well you can get them anywhere but what i will tell you is don't go just get them at a grocery store you need to get certified seed potatoes and the reason being certified seed potatoes are marked for disease resistance. These are tested for disease resistance. And it, there's, there's a wide array of them. Um, if you're looking at saying, well, God, Heather, I wanna store them because I have a really cold cellar and yada yada. Okay, well, maybe go get russets because russets do store really well where some of them don't. Um, and that's something you can Google if you wanna look at different varieties. Um, I'm doing reds, this is what was left and I don't mind if they come out little red potatoes. I'm, I'm all good with that. I'll just slice them and saute them. So whatever you choose, just get a nice, and you gotta figure out how far apart because roughly they need to be nine inches apart. Um, so that'll help tell you how many you need. Where are you gonna put it in? Well, you're gonna put it in a container. These are a new little handy dandy thing that just came out last year. Um, I love the owners. I love the product. It has gone over very well. They're called Smart Pots and they come in a wide array of sizes. So what we're going to do, and I like it because it air prunes, and what a container will do, and there, you can use anything. You can use a Rubbermaid tote, honestly, and just drill holes in it. Um, I've seen people use waste cans. I've seen people we have one person at TV2 using a dryer drum. So there's, there's a multitude of things you can do here. I like the container because A, you're lessening your chance of insects and you're lessening your chance of any soil born, so, uh, yeah. soil born diseases. I got it out, say that three times really fast. Okay, so how do you, what do you do? Well, get your container. This is how easy it is. 
potting mix. Now notice this is a nice, well-draining potting mix. All you're gonna do is put a couple inches on the bottom. But Heather, where's your compost? Well, you're not gonna compost. You're not gonna pour manure in. Because let me tell you why. Potatoes like it a little more acidic with a, loyal, a lower, gosh, I am just stumbling everywhere, lower pH. And because of that, manure can be sweet and it can cause a disease called potato scab, which obviously nobody wants scabs, gross. So we're just gonna put in a couple inches down in the bottom. Now, you have this lovely potato. It looks like your morning hair. But this one here is a little too big to plant on its own. So what I did ahead of time, look at these guys. They make fun little helmets too, but you're gonna cut two eyes. Now, what's an eye? Not these, these. These are eyes, okay? And all you're gonna do is cut a slice out so that you have two eyes. And here's one that's even a little smaller. I put a little diatomaceous earth on the end. That's just me, you know I like it, it's organic. And I allowed this to sit for a day, actually two days. Now, all you're gonna do is literally set these down in. And you're, you're, we'll get a close up here in a few so you can see how I put them. Now again, in this particular size container, I can do five, okay? So I'm just gonna place them down in nice and loose. You know what, we're gonna do this just because, just because I wanna see what it does. I'm gonna put this sucker right in the middle. And yeah, it's probably not gonna do much, but why not, let's try it. We'll come back in the fall and see how this comes out. So we're gonna space them out roughly nine inches apart. All I have to do, and literally, this is all you do. You're gonna put a few inches of soil over it and you're just gonna water it in. Now, let, I will go over the harvesting stuff as we get closer, but all you wanna do is kinda cover up the stems. Now, they're gonna start growing, and you're gonna start seeing little green things pop off the top. You need to remember, tomatoes, or <clears throat> potatoes grow up. So, as you start seeing about six inches of vine and green at the top, you're gonna mound. You're gonna pour some more soil over this. Okay, and you're gonna keep it watered. I said water, not soggy, because if you get them soggy, you're opening it up to diseases and you're opening it up to them rotting. So just a nice mediocre moisture. Obviously with this summer, we haven't had an issue with watering. Um, if you would have a really hot day, and I don't think we're gonna see this, but if it gets above 100, you're gonna wanna move it into a little shadier spot for the day. They don't like it really, really hot. So, as of right now, that's all we're doing. We're just gonna plant them, let them start growing, and just keep them watered. Now, my potting mix has a little bit of fertilizer built in, so I'm not gonna have to do anything for a hot minute. Um, but when I do use it, you have to look for a higher middle number and end number. Jack's Bloom Boost is a good little product. It's under six, seven dollars. Uh, it'll last you a while. You will, through the course, like every three weeks, as they grow, you're gonna water it with a little bit of it. Um, some people use Osmocote Time Release, you can do that. You can, use, uh, you can use the Dramatic K, but that one there, it's a little more nitrogen. So you gotta make sure your numbers are correct on this. So we're looking for a higher middle and a higher end number. Um, other than that, that's all you're gonna do right now. So if you decide to run to the store and grab a few and join this project with me, that'd be awesome. So stay tuned when we come right back. We're gonna jump into garlic. At Bear Carpet One, we're more interested in hearing about your needs than talking about our achievements. Here you will find the best selection of floor covering in the region. Currently we are featuring Lee's Carpet. They have been producing carpet since 1846 and still offer the same quality that has made them famous. Visit our storefront located in Sugar Creek next to McDonald's for our store-wide sale from September 5th through September 13th with special financing. 
Bear Carpet One, where beautiful is made affordable. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college. And yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, you would think that the red hair would not let me be forgetful, but you could swear it's blonde sometimes. A couple things I wanted to add on the potato gardening is it does need to be in full sun. And secondly, you do want to dust it because see, by the time I come back to you guys, you should already be piling dirt up if you're going to try them. So you should be you know, scotching the dirt up on them. And you might get beetles because there is some insects that really like potatoes, one of which is beetles. So you may have to dust, but I don't want to use chemicals. We don't. Use your diatomaceous earth that we talked about last season and this season. So dust it with that. Um, again, make sure it's not raining, but that'll help keep it, keep the beetles away and at least kill them. Um, moving on, we're going to go into garlic. Garlic has gained popularity over the years. Many people are supplementing with it. They're eating garlic a lot more in their foods. There's a lot more organic sprays that are being made to deter deer, rabbits, insects even, that are made with garlic. Now, for those of you that already do garlic, um, you can see last October's garlic is out. Um, it needs to be out. You guys need to be pulling it. Even if it's not, you can see some of these are bigger than others, but you need to pop them out in July. Okay, so now what do you do with them? Can you take them in and eat them? No. You're going to cure them. So by curing them, you do not want to put them in full sunlight. I don't care if you want to hang them. You can lay them out in a wheelbarrow or on cardboard. Get them in a well-ventilated place that is shady. Okay, so that they're not in direct sun. You're going to leave them out there to cure for hmm, a week, two. Um, once you get to that point, then you have to decide you got to save some. You want to save some if you want next year's crop. Take your biggest. I know you'd like to use it, but take your biggest. You're going to pull apart just how we use cloves and gar and gardening not and cooking um, you're going to use it just like you do when you cook stuff you're going to take the cloves off now what i will tell you is that this part may have dried off and that's okay when you plant it this tip here is going to be pointed just like you get from the store it's the same same premise this is going to have a flat end that is what you're going to put into the ground in the fall now you're going to plant garlic in October. How deep? Thumb deep. A couple inches. How far apart? Fist. About a fist or so apart. So thumb, fist. Boom. That's going to give you some knockout garlic. Other than that, with garlic, it is pretty disease resistant. Um, this year I know a couple people I've talked to said, good, they're not as big. Well, maybe the rain had something to do with it. I know last year everybody had a little bit better garlic. Um, it could be because of the rain. Only, only God knows those things. Um, but once you save it, remember, you're going to want to store garlic 
in a well ventilated place and you're not going to want to jam it in somewhere because it can mold possibly so a lot of times like in my um, house i keep mine in those i you know those tiered fruit baskets or like i don't know people hang in their kitchen and put fake fruit in them like i do um, i usually put my garlic and even my dried chili peppers and stuff in there uh, that's all you do you just cut this off if it does have any you know cut the ends off throw it up in there and then you just wash it and use it as needed pull apart your cloves and use it as needed but i strongly suggest it it's something that can be a little pricier at the stores and it's so easy i mean honestly once it's planted you really don't do much to it um do you fertilize it with anything yeah get put some bone meal in and of course again use a potting mix or really till because anything that's going to have a root like your carrots um, your garlic anything in the ground you really want a nice loose soil because it has to expand so if you throw it in clay soil that didn't work out too well no. so just go to the store break the bank and buy a little potting mix um, and again when you save it and you go to plant it this october remember one clove, just, just one. Don't throw the whole thing back in. Um, the other thing, where do you get garlic? Well, usually most of your garden centers, any of your independent garden centers are gonna have garlic. So you can definitely use, just go to the store, get them there. And then you have some if you didn't plant any this year. Luckily, there's gonna be bunches for my canned spaghetti sauce. So I'm pretty excited. Um, next week, we are gonna cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to review some perennials that have really taken the pounding through this summer. I'm going to go over some new varieties that I have tried that are getting an eh or a ting. So we're going to go over that. We're also going to go over some before and after containers that I did trialing a new fertilizer. And I think you're going to really be shocked by it. I mean, really be shocked. I was even. And then we're gonna clean up those nasty looking baskets. If you forgot about them and you haven't kept up with them, I know we touched base on this last year, but if you didn't watch any of them from last year, we're gonna catch you up to speed. And we're gonna tell you why you do, what you do, and when you do it. And how we make them look like something out of a Better Homes and Gardens catalog or magazine. So join me next week. I'm really excited. I'm so glad this weather's holding up. And let's keep praying and doing the no rain dance. And let's hope that this Ohio gardening season is midway and on the up and up.